So, once again, we'll start with a little review. Not too much this time. I just want to add to our cheat sheet things we learned yesterday. So, believe it or not, we only really learned like two or three things. But those two or three things were <laughs> kind of intense. So, um, so what, what we covered yesterday? We covered structs and interfaces, and we also covered pointers. So, Structs have a nice mapping to JavaScript things. So in JavaScript, how do you make a class? Does anybody remember how to do that? Did you guys learn how to do that? Like make your own object in JavaScript. You guys remember how to get through this document? Yeah, OK. I was just taking a second to catch up there. Making an object in JavaScript. A new object? Yes, exactly. So we might say, you, you typically make a class this way, right? Right, and then you'd say. You call it a constructor, right? Yes, constructor. That's the constructor. Notice in JavaScript, constructors are just functions. And then if I want to add things to it, how do I do that? Does anybody remember? There you go. You can either do this, or you can say dot prototype dot the name. Um, okay, and then inside of whatever, you know, you have access to this, right? And so if I had in here this dot x equals five, I can access it here. Are you following? And so I call that fun function by saying whatever. And what JavaScript does is it, is it creates an object, it, it attaches that prototype to it. And so that when I say objects.whatever, first it looks inside of here, it doesn't find it inside of here, and then it looks on the prototype. And it finds it here, and then it invokes that function. It sets the this here to the object, and then it calls it. So actually, JavaScript, the way it does this is kind of confusing. Um, but once you get used to it, it makes a little more sense. And it looks like other OO languages. So how do we do that in Go? Does, does anybody remember we, this basic idea? How do we do that? Type. <coughs> yeah. So we have type, and then we'll just call it the same thing. And then what's the struct? Right, so struct. Right. And we have this x. x looks like an int, so how do we do that? Notice that we can't assign a value, okay? Go doesn't have constructors. Constructors are just functions that return structs, okay? So there's no actual constructor concept. So the way we would normally do that, and I didn't show you this guy to you, but is you'd say something like new my class, and it returns, and then I'd say return my class. Just to make it more explicit, this is okay. So, whereas this has a special meaning in JavaScript, this constructor, this is just a regular function. You can call it anything you want. But anyway, so we, we didn't talk about that, but we did talk about the rest of this. So, how do I create a method? So, this whatever is a method on my class. How do I create a method? In So we'd say something like this, right? There's our receiver. Think of this as like my class of whatever we're saying, my class. And then I give it the name, whatever. This this uh, this function didn't return anything, and it didn't take anything. So we're gonna do the same thing. And instead of console log, we'll say um, So the receiver is always the, the name of the structure. Uh, so the receiver is always a, uh, a variable and a type. And this type is uh, something you define. It has to be a, a new type. You can't, so it, would, it might be interesting to say, oh, can I make a method for an int, right? That'd be kind of cool. So I could add methods to ints. You can't do that. <laughs> you 
have to give it a type that's defined in your package. Yeah, but it's defined in the, the type. We define it up here. Oh, okay. So there's the type, there's the type. Okay. And just to make this the same, we don't have to call it obj, we can call it this. And then it looks very much the same as the other one, right? So whereas this is explicit in Go, it's implicit in JavaScript. This, we didn't define this anywhere. This just a, is the sign of the option. We get now. And in Go, we have to specify it. So this is more, a little more clear than this first one. Okay. And then how do we create a new one? So I want to say, well, first we'd probably be in a main. And I'd say obj phone equal. Well, in this case, I'd say new line. This is a function that calls this function, creates that by doing ampersand and then struct. So this initializes the structure and that returns the address. The address, the address of that structure. Okay. So this is a pointer to my class. Would uh, I mean, but uh, something that might improve that a little bit would be to have uh, new my class take an argument and then you can set the x. Sure. Add to the argument, is that way when you create an object? Yep, no, good good point. So to show that. How you want it to be. Makes sense. Same idea. I'm setting X here, I set X here. So like I said, the constructor is sort of implicit in the JavaScript, it's explicit here. There's no real idea of a constructor. We just create functions that behave like constructors. But they end up looking very much the same, right? Uh, and then I say obj dot whatever. So hopefully you can see the correspondence here. We'll see a lot more examples so that we can see the pattern show up. But I just, I just want to show you that the pattern in JavaScript, the pattern in Go, not that different. A little bit of different syntax and stuff, but otherwise pretty close. Okay. I think the, uh, the way I've seen uh, methods attached to prototype in JavaScript is like you know I'd have the bar object or create new object, however, and then you know add properties to it, and then to, to add a method, it'd be like my class dot prototype dot, and then would there be the method name or there's a slightly different way to do that, right? Like could. It's the same thing. Does it make sense why it's the same thing? Well, this isn't a, we're not talking about JavaScript, so I don't really want to explain why it's the same thing. <laughs> like I said, JavaScript's OO is a little confusing. I, I find it confusing, but um, the whole prototype thing. Yeah. Okay, so something that JavaScript has that we don't have in Go is I can create, you know, if you wanted to make this class inherit from another class, you can say, equals new uh, parent class. And this is another example of, boy, that's a very strange way to do OO. But um, we don't have that in Go, so there's no corresponding idea. OK? Cool. OK. So pointers, pointers don't really exist in JavaScript. So that's an idea we have in Go that we don't really have in JavaScript. And I showed you that we do occasionally run into it in that some things <coughs> In JavaScript, like numbers and strings and things are, are copied. So if you modify the variable, it doesn't change. But some things are by reference. So if I modify an object or an array, it does modify the original. Okay? And Go has similar, except it's more explicit. You're going to see the stars. Right? So if I change x in my, in my class, it's going to change it for everybody. So you end up with similar uh, behavior. It's just a little more explicit in Go because now we have real pointers. Okay, but that was uh, we covered interfaces as well. I'll, we'll see some examples of interfaces. Interfaces also don't really exist in JavaScript. The reason why interfaces don't exist in JavaScript is JavaScript dynamic and type. I can call, you know, I can make a, I can just invoke a function here, something that doesn't exist. I can do that. Now it's going to throw an exception. But the point is, 
it will let me do that. In Go, that would be compiler error. Okay. So we don't really need interfaces in JavaScript. We have to have them in Go so the compiler does what we want to do. Okay. But that was uh, about it, I think. Unless I'm missing something. We did a bunch of examples. Uh, so, all right. I thought instead of introducing a whole bunch of new, so, so basically we've covered pretty much everything. The only thing we haven't covered is concurrency, and that's like a huge topic. Okay, and I think it would be better for us to focus on some uh, more practical programming than to introduce another new concept. I think we've taken on enough new concepts from yesterday afternoon. So to do that, I think uh, we can start doing some work with files. Because now we know enough to work with files. Uh, we didn't really, because we hadn't talked about interfaces. But now that we have, we can start to work with them. And I think you guys will find that files are pretty easy to work with. So let's look at an example of how I open a file in Adam here. 